Hi, it's Becca here again with my colouring tutorial of Reading Beauty available for Little Darling Rubber Stamps and it's by Saturated Canary. I've already done the hair and face. As you can see I've touched up the little bit of neck that I'd originally missed. And now I'm going to go in and colour the dress Victorian Velvet. Once again it's just the same principle you go in where you're going to want the colour the darkest. So I'm using a this happens to be a pro art brush, but I like to use the round brushes. It's a size number three. And you just brush it in. So it goes almost white in places. Right, the first first coat will look quite wishy. Brush is quite wet for this one just to move the colour around a lot. And this first coat won't look anything like. When it's finished, let's move the colour around lots. So the it is a bit darker where you're going to have a darker, but it goes to quite almost white. And the lighter bits. One of the reasons I like to do the background last is it's just a bit more forgiving if you do make any mistakes, got the lines in places. You can always go around and brush them away and it's not going to spoil your background for one. Or well, if you're going to go for quite a dark background, which I am going to do for this one, you can just hide it basically. Yeah. I want to have the flowers in her hair matching the pink of her dress because the roses. Sort of. So the colour isn't all the same all over, you don't want the brush quite so wet for this. Just quickly do it. There we go, I'm going to do it for the first coat. I'm going to have a boot cream, so I'll start off again with antique linen. I'm just go in the area that is going to be darker. Careful you not to go over her hair because you don't want to pull the colour from her hair or her fingers off into the book. Spine, and back at the bottom. That's all the book. So when I did the face, when I went in with the vintage photo, I used the pen. Yet when I do cream, I also use vintage photo. But I like the way that the re inker works with this. You can also use the ink pads. The ink pads are really easy to use. All you do is when you get one... Excuse how monkey this is, I wasn't going to do this. If you squeeze the top together, you open up, you've had a nice little reservoir of ink inside. You can just use that. Reinkers are a bit more versatile, sorry, the pads are a bit more versatile than the reinkers. As you can see from this, I keep my blending tool on top. Just blend with it as well as stamp with it. Right. So for her shoes, I think I'm going to go with corduroy. Just go in. This can be used on hair as well to get a bit of a, a ready tinge. I don't do it often. It does happen now and again, but... There's another option there if you want to add a different colour to it. Right, we've missed a lace off there as well. So we'll go back to the pen. Give me a push in. Books in the background. Oh. We'll have another cream one, I think. I want more cream. 
And sometimes you find when you stamp as well, especially on this paper, you might move your pad a little bit and it will go slightly blurry, but once you've coloured in, you can't tell the difference or to save you wasting images. Just colour in if you're not sure, it should be alright. Right, and the other one. I think I'll have the other book. Mm, blue. I'm using faded jeans for this one. Just a tiny bit of free ink of faded jeans. You can use the pen for this. This is one of the ones where the colour doesn't really that much difference between the two of them. I'm just going to go on. I really want it to be darker. Get any excess if you need to and then blend it in. Right, now for adding the shading. I'll start with the book first. So I'm using vintage photo but re this time. So you can also use the pad. The pens work alright, this is just... I just think this works a little bit better to make a cream colour. I'll just leave on a bit of shading under her hair there. It's a tiny, tiny bit. And then, same for the other cover. I see it coming to life already. I've put in this layer in because you can see things just starting to pop a little bit. Of course, you want to make the henna look like it is on top, so a bit of shadow behind. This one. And blend up, we don't have too many distinct lines. And then the, the spine. If you do the spine last, you can then blend any bits where you've gone over. Oh yeah, and we've got the cream book on the floor to do. There's the front of it done. There we are. Right, because I've used brush card dry, the colour I like to Match with that is what I'm not staying. Because they're not very dark, which is the tiniest amount. Some of the shadows. And so again, there's practically nothing on your brush. There we go. Not gone. Yeah. Right. And well, for the book, I use. Black sort, it's a tiny bit. With the black sort, a little does go a long way, so you really don't need a lot with this. And you have to blend it quite quick as well, it's one of the ones that likes to soak in. When this is all dry, I will pop in the pink heart. But if you do it before it's dry, it will all, all blend in. Right, for shade, put the pink. You can use edged mahogany if you want. In this case, I'm going to use black soot just to make the shadows a little bit, a bit darker. So just the same as all the other bits. The bits that are darker. You can go in. And by a little is better. You can always add more, but you can't take it away, especially with black soot. It's quite unforgiving. You are going over again with your Victorian velvet so it won't stay looking this black. If you just get it blended nice and it's see so you can see you've got your shadow there, that bit that's creased in, that's creased over, that's creased under. Go on this side. That's a bit more on these. 
left. So you can see that the lace is dipped a bit as it's been stitched there. I want to well up. Put a shade and done there. Once you brush off, you can actually blend it out so you don't put any more colour on, you just blend them what's there. And see that? And we're going to do a bit round the edges as well. To be fair, most of where I've coloured has got at least three coats, sometimes more. We've got the initial colour to go down, then we have the shade and layer, and then the colour layer again just to go over. And bring the colour back in where the shade is. Sorry, the kids again. And that's why we call Grace Gobby Grace. Oh, yeah, right, I'm here with the shade one. And then we'll go back in with the book. We'll start with the antique linen again. Oi, shush! Put the sound just go over. We've put the vintage photo. Alright. And the spine there. Shh. Mommy. I'm busy, I'm filming. Why so the so I, so my voice is gonna be in the video? Yes, well yeah, no shush. Yay. Yeah. As I said before, I'll keep bringing your head back. You might find you to just pull the colour over a bit. So when you set light on it, you can always see the way everything's going. shoes. That feels brush corduroy. So we're back in with the brush corduroy literally just a bit where we put the walnut stain down. I'm gonna keep them quite light. Back in with the uh, jeans. Now I've said that I do the background last but there are a few colours where if I've that's going to be touching the background. I'll do those after the background. They tend to be the dark greens and the edge mahoganies. If they're if they're left, if they're done first, the background will more than likely start to interfere with their colours. Right, so now we just need to go back in with the Victorian velvet and just go in the bits where you put your black. You really just. Instead of putting colour down on this layer, you're just making the shaded areas back to the pinky colour again. So this is just little brush strokes. Quite a dryish brush this time as well. So you don't want to do all your shading with the black. If you want to just put a bit of extra colour in on that bit there, you can. See there, this bit wasn't quite dry and start to pull in. Yeah. I'll take him out. Yeah. The dog's joined us now as well. Yeah. And then when you take the doggy out, please. Yeah, would you take him out, please? Don't <laughs> shake him, you don't get out. William, Sorry about that. I want to just go over the bit where you put the colour on. Yeah. There's a little bit there I could do with a bit of extra colour on, so I'm sorry about the background noise there. And Puppy Ranch to join us as well as me, so. Oh, 
a small bit of flour. So I use a bigger brush this time as a size 4 brush. I'm just going to use a bit of thread, a thread bare lap. There's a few different colours I use. This is thread bare lap, there's pumice stone. So you just sort of go along where you can see where the level of everything is. So they don't look like the floating in space. And just keep building the floor up until you're happy with what you've got. You can actually go on with a bit darker colour just to make the dark bits dark or just hold your brush up a bit more. Daughter's now shooting me. You wouldn't think I've told them not to come in, here, would you? Right, there we are. Thanks for looking. I'll come back with the hair in a moment. Oh, sorry, the background in a moment. Thank you. Bye.